Okay, so okay. now it's on. Okay, so I will begin. Hello, everyone. It's very glad to be here to present my current work, which is a colon generation approach for the electric autonomous diorite problem. This work is collaborated with my supervisor, Jacob Pushinger and Nicola Dupin. So for today's presentation, I will first give you a brief introduction about the EA DARP, and then I will present the methodology for solving EA DARP. And the third part is the computational results of column generation compared to the best reported results in the literature. And the final part is the conclusion and extensions. Now let's begin with the introduction part. A series of transport-related problems such as greenhouse gas emission and congestion have appeared in the worldwide. And scholars have proposed the two possible directions to address those concerns. One is to use battery electric vehicles. Another is to provide ride sharing services. And the dial ride problem is defined as a fleet of vehicles provides ride sharing services to users specifying the arrangements, destinations, and preferred arrival time. However, few studies have been done to investigate the influence of electric vehicles on the dial ride problem optimization. So only works that have proposed an exact method to solve small to medium sized instance optimally in the context of electric dial ride problem is by Bon Giovanni and Coser in 2019, where the authors have proposed a branch and cut method that can solve instance with up to five vehicles and 14 requests uh, optimally. And here is a solution for solving the electric autonomous dial ride problem, which consists of four vehicles and four, uh, 16 requests. Different color represents different routes. So vehicles start from the orange depot and, and transport customers from specific origins to specific destinations and then return to the destination depot. In case of not, ener not enough energy for the vehicle, the vehicle must visit the recharging station and the recharging station is only allowed to be visited when there is no passenger on board. And before I talk about the EA DARP characteristics, I would like to first clarify the characteristics of the typical dial ride problem that is different from the vehicle routing problem. Uh, first of all, in the dial ride problem, we need to consider the pair and precedence constraints. It means that we need to make sure the drop off node of a request should be visited after the pickup node of the corresponding request. And also, the drop off node and the corresponding pickup node should be on the same route. Another important characteristic of dial ride problem that is different from the vehicle routing problem is that we need to take into account the service quality. Because now in the dial ride problem, the vehicles transport users from specific uh, ranges to specific destinations. So we need to take into account the user's inconvenience. It's impossible for a user to spend too much time on the vehicle. So we need to take it into account. So usually in the typical dial ride problem, a maximal user ride time is set as a constraint. And the maximal user ride time constraint, as well as the time window constraint on each of the nodes, makes the delay of the service beginning time possible to eliminate the unnecessary waiting time and improve the service quality. And for this point, I will give you an example to explain. So here is a partial pass uh, from the depot to the node to minus and the vehicle travels from, start, starts from the depot and then uh, pick up the first request and the pickup node one plus, assuming that each request only consists of one passenger. So the, the vehicle travels from the depot and then go to pick passenger one as a node one plus, and then go to pick passenger two as a node two plus, and then drop off passenger one, and finally drop off the passenger two. And here below the figure is a visible schedule for the vehicle to begin the service at, at each node. And we can see the vehicle start from the depot at 55 and ends at the node one minus and 118. But uh, in this schedule, a certain amount of uh, waiting time have been generated as a node one minus because vehicle arrives earlier than the earliest time window as a one minus, as a node one minus. So the vehicle arrives at 145 
but the earliest um, um, earliest time window as a node one minus is equal to 155. And there are two passengers on board when vehicle arrives as the node one minus. So the two passenger, the passenger one and passenger two will until will wait at this node until the earliest time window begin. So in total, 20 minutes waiting time will be generated at this node. However, we can actually delay the service begin time at its previous node, which is node two plus. Uh, we can delay 10 minutes of service begin time from 113 to 140 so that the passenger two doesn't need to wait as a node one minus so that we can reduce the total user ride time from 105 to 95 and improve the service quality so that we can see from this example the delay of service begin time is possible to eliminate the unnecessary waiting time and improve the uh, service quality and improve the solution's feasibility. And uh, normally, uh, we in the in the in the typical dial ride problem, we invoke the eight step method proposed in the work of Gozo and Rabot in two thousand and three to um, improve the schedules for the vehicle. And by using this method, it can improve the solution's feasibility. However, this method, which is usually used in the typical dial ride problem, cannot be applied in our case to solve the EA dial because we consider not only a uh, maximal user right time constraints uh, in the model, but also a weighted sum formulation as our objective functions. Because in this weighted sum formulation, it consists first the total travel time for all the vehicles, and second objective is the total access user right time for all the users. So for the second objective, we need to optimize the schedule rather than just uh, improve the feasible schedule. We need to um, we need to calculate the schedule with the minimal access user right time, and uh, the eight step method proposed in the literature cannot be uh, cannot be applied in this case. And unfortunately, no method has been designed yet to determine the optimal schedule. And second characteristics of our problem is the use of electric autonomous vehicle in the vehicle fleet. So it will introduce the complexity to the problem because first we need to consider the uh, detour to the recharging station on the route. And secondly, the partial recharging is allowed at each recharging station. So that we need to determine how much energy to be recharged at each recharging station. And the longer time vehicle recharges at the recharging station will extend the driving range. However, it, it will be conflict to the uh, time window constraints for the latter node if you recharge a lot of time in the recharging station. So we need to decide carefully how much energy to be recharged at each recharging station. And thirdly, no restriction on the route duration because we are now using autonomous vehicles. It can be operated in a non-stop manner. And there is a limit of visit to the recharging station to at most once. Each recharging station is restricted to be visited at most once by all the vehicles. And we set a minimal battery level at the end of the route to analyze the uh, algorithm's performance. And we have uh, analyzed three different scenarios, 10%, 14%, and 17%, which indicates that vehicle should return to the final destination with at least 10%, 14%, and 17% of the total energy being kept at the end of the route. So with a higher value of the minimal battery level at the end of the route, the problem becomes more difficult to be solved even feasibly. And here is the formulation, weighted sum formulation for the objective functions. And the first term in the objective function is the total travel time for all the vehicles. And it has the weight factor equal to 0 0.75. And for the second objective, uh, second term in the objective is the total access user ride time. Uh, and the weight factor is 0 0.25. And a series of constraints need to be satisfied while solving the EA DARP. And we are tackling with the static version of EA DARP. So all the requests are known in advance. There is no possibility to add a new request while uh, vehicle are, so, are serving the customer request. So we are technically with the uh, static version. 
And the EA DARP is formulated as a set covering problem, which is also called mask problem. And in the real implementation, we solve the linear relaxation of the mask problem on a subset of the omega, which is denoted as an omega prime. And now I will present the methodology for solving the EA DARP. We have proposed a column generation approach to solve the EA DARP, which the continuous RMP, um, each consequence in the continuous RMP is associated with uh, dual variables. And those dual variables is used to formulate the objective functions for the pricing subproblems. And the pricing subproblems objective function is to minimize, is to find the columns with minimal reduced cost while uh, respect to a series of constraints. And the column generation approach is described as iteratively solve the continuous RMP and the pricing subproblem. The continuous RMP will provide the dual information to formulate the objective functions for the pricing subproblems, while the pricing subproblems is to find columns with a minimal reduced cost. And each time we find columns with negative reduced cost, we will add it into the omega prime and we. Uh, and after we solving the pricing sub problem, we solve again the continuous RMP and to update the dual information. And this process is stopped until no more negative reduced columns, cost columns can be found by solving the pricing sub problem. And we got the we get the optimal solutions for the continuous master problem. And we have proposed a labeling algorithm to solve the pricing sub problem because mm, the efficiency of the resolution for the pricing sub problem is a key point for the total performance. And we have proposed an efficient labeling algorithm to solve the pricing sub problem. So first we need to consider in the labeling algorithm how to extend the partial path because typically the partial path is, is extended node by node. However, in our sub, in our sub problems, the objective functions contains the total access user write time. So the typical extension method of the partial path may not be applicable in our case because it will introduce two problems. First, we cannot determine the minimal access user write time when there is open request on the partial path. Imagine that the request haven't been delivered. So for this request, we cannot determine how much time the passengers, the associated passenger will spend on the vehicle because it hasn't been delivered. So we cannot calculate the total access user write time in this case. And secondly, the total access user write time is not always increased with the extension. Uh, as shown in the former example, it's possible that we extend to our next node and we can delay the service being time as a former node so that the uh, total access user write time will decrease. So we, uh, so this second, second point will introduce a confliction in the dominance rule while applying the label algorithm because we cannot make sure that if the level one dominates the level two because of our lower reduced cost, the extension from the current node of level one to the next node, it will still dominate the same extension for level two. So we cannot make sure the extension of level one still dominates the extension of level two so that the dominance rule cannot be applied in this case. And so the conclusion is that we cannot use the typical extension rules to extend the partial path node by node. And instead, we have proposed to extend the partial path segment by segment. And the segment here is the segment that starts and ends with zero split, zero split node. And the zero split node is defined as a node that no passenger on board while arriving and leaving this node. For example, in this figure, the depot is a zero split node. And the uh, node one plus is also a zero split node because when vehicle arrive at the one at the node one plus, there is no passenger on board. And similarly, the, the node two minus is also a zero split node because when vehicle leave the node two minus, there is no passenger on board. So that we can regard the partial path as a concatenation of different segments so that we extend the partial path no, uh, segment by segment. And in this way, we can make sure that the total access user write time is a non decreasing value because if you extend a segment, it will, it will at least introduce 
some it introduced the access user right time when there are passenger being delivered on this segment. So we can make sure that the dominance rule will work on the zero split node. And now we, uh, we, we will calculate the minimal access user right time for each segment because the access user right time is in the objective functions for the sub problem. So we need to calculate the minimal access user right time. And before that, there are two important points is that uh, the first point is that the optimal schedule that has the minimal access user right time is not unique for a given segment. For a given segment, it may have many optimal schedules with the same amount of minimal access user right time. The second point is that we need to consider all the optimal schedules instead of just one optimal schedules, just one optimal schedule for a given segment. Because if we only consider one optimal schedule, it may be conflict with the next segment if we, if we extend the, the partial path from current segment to the next segment. If we only have one optimal schedule, it may be conflict with the next segment if this segment contains a node that has a very strict time window. So we need to consider all the possibilities for the optimal schedules. And to this end, we have proposed a two-stage evaluation scheme. And for the stage one, is to, we, we, we construct the latest optimal schedule denoted as BL for a given segment. And based on the latest optimal schedule, we are able to determine the earliest optimal schedule BE for a given segment. And with the, the, these two uh, schedules, the latest and the earliest schedule, we can calculate all the optimal schedules by moving forward from the latest uh, optimal schedule by a certain amount of the time. And the maximal user right and feasibility will be checked after we got the earliest and the latest optimal schedules. Here is an example for the BE and BL. And the first line is the latest the optimal schedules. And I directly put the service begin time on each node uh, in, the, in the table. And the last line is the earliest optimal schedules. So the service begin time at each node is shown in the table table and uh, the, the, all the optimal schedules can be obtained by moving forward from the latest optimal schedule by amount of uh, data so that by this way we can calculate all the optimal schedules for a given segment. And then we can convert the segment into an arc and replace the original time windows by the optimal service begin time we calculated. Uh, we can replace the original time window by the latest and the earliest optimal service begin time as the first node, as the end node, as a segment. And then we can convert the original graph to a sparse graph, which all the nodes on the new graph are zero split nodes. And now we are able to convert the uh, original EA doc to the electric vehicle routing problem. And we can, we can use the method in the literature to address. And we have proposed a, an acceleration strategy that we can pre-calculate all the segment at once so that uh, when extension, when, ex when extending the partial path, we just concatenate the segment together. And it will allow us to do a constant time feasibility checking and it will, um, it, in, it, it reduced the, the, the computational time largely. And here is the label extension, visibility checking and dominance rules. Uh, and those, um, those methods are based on the work of Desoni and Causer in 2016. And I will not precise it in the presentation. And now I will present the computational results from uh, column generation and compared to the best reported results in the literature. We have tested our algorithm on three existing instance sets from the literature. The first two instance sets are adopted from the work of Bon Giovanni in 2019. And um, those instances, uh, uh, the first instance contains um, contains with up to five vehicles and 15 requests. And it's adopt, adapted from the standard dial ride power instance. And it's called type A instance. And the real and the second instance that is based on the real world ride sharing data set of Uber technology. And it's, it, it contains at most 
five vehicles and 15 requests, and is, it, it, it is called type U instance. And the third instance is based on the large instance, uh, large scale instance set in the literature. And the largest instance contains eight vehicles and 96 requests. And for each instance, we have test our algorithm under different energy restriction from 10% to 17%. And here are the results on the type A instance under low energy restriction, which means um, vehicle should keep at least 10% energy at the end of the route. Uh, compared to the, uh, to the best reported literature results, by our uh, colon generation with leveling algorithm, we are able to solve 12 out of 14 instances optimally as a root node, and the lower bound is improved by 0.7 on average. Because in this case, most of the instances are solved optimally, so the lower bound is equal to the optimal solution cost, and there is actually no space to improve the lower bound furthermore. And but we still we are still able to improve two lower bounds. And the maximal improvement is 5%. And the average improvement of the lower bound compared to the best reported lower bound in the literature is 0.7% on average. And we are able to decrease the computational time by 16% on average. And for the median energy restriction on, uh, on the type A instances, we are able to uh, solve optimally 11 out of 14 instances um, as a root node, and we report four new optimal solutions while the literature method cannot. And the lower bound is improved by 2% uh, on average, and the maximal improvement is up to 23%, and the computational time decreased by 27% on average. And for the most difficult case, Mm, on the type A instance, which the vehicle should keep at least 17% of energy at the end of the route, we are able to solve five out of 14 instances optimally as a root node, and we report seven new best solutions compared to the um, compared to the literature results on the previously solved and unsolved instance. And the lower bound is improved by 1.3% on average, and the maximal improvement is about 5%, and the computational time decreased 15% on average. And for the type U instance, similar, uh, similar observation is, is noticed, and we are able to solve most of the instance as a root node optimally. We can report new best solutions compared to the best reported results in the literature, and we are able to improve the lower bounds on the best reported lower bounds uh, in the literature. And um, on the type R instance, which are large scale instance, no exact method result, exact result is reported in the literature. So we compared our algorithm to the best heuristic approach results, and we are able to provide new best solutions, and we provide the first hand uh, lower bound values for those large scale instances. And our clone generation uh, algorithm can solve instance instance with up to five, uh, eight vehicles and 96 requests, while the branch and cap method in the literature cannot. And here is the summary for the per performance of the algorithm. First, we can uh, 15 out of 84 instances are solved optimally as a root node, and we observe a very small deviation uh, as a root node, uh, about 0.31% on average. And we observe a significant improvement on the lower bound. We obtain 14 equal lower bounds and provide 24 better lower bounds compared to the best reported results in the literature. Um, uh, on average, 1.3% increase on the lower bound is, is observed. And we report 22 new best integer solutions and we identify 15 new optimal solutions and we have shorter uh, computational time than the uh, literature, uh, literature method. And for the performance of column generation on the large scale instances, we can improve, we can, we can provide, we provide 14 better integer solutions and we identify five optimal solutions. And uh, this, uh, and we we report seventeen new uh, uh, new lower bounds based on the instances.
And now I will present the conclusion and extensions. First, for the conclusion, we have proposed a new representation of the partial path and a new scheduling optimization method. And we have proposed an efficient column generation method with customized, customized leveling algorithm to solve the EA DARP. And we observe a significant improvement on the lower bound quality and also the solution quality compared to the state of art works. And the column generation is proved to be capable of handling large scale instances. And for the future work, it will be interesting to also extend the column generation in the closely related topics such as pickup and delivery problem with time window. And the novel scheduling uh, optimization method can be used in a multiple objective optimization context. And it also be it, it, it is also interesting to, to adapt our algorithm to handle the dynamic version of EA DARP which the request can be added in the process of serving customers requests. And here are the references used in the presentation. And here is all of my presentation. If you have any uh, questions and remarks, I will be very glad. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Yue. It was super interesting. Yeah, thank so you. Have, you. have you thought of uh, something for the next uh, step?